What's up my beautiful people? I can't stop, st stop smiling because I'm a data guy, I love technology, so we're here to talk about what the four watches showed on the Boston Marathon 2023. I don't think there's ever been a situation where there's four watches, two on one hand, two on the other, same distance, same person, same cadence, same stride length, same corners that I'm cutting, same exact weather compared to a chip. So let's get straight into it, my beautiful people. For those who are new, hella good here. I've been running every day since May 15, 2017. Ran across the US LA to New York City. Did my first 100 mile race back last August. About to do my second 100 mile race coming up in June, Western State, the oldest 100 mile foot race. And we did Boston Marathon. So let's go, baby. I wore four different watches, starting with the Apple Series 7 that was on my left wrist. And then we got the Apple Ultra Game Changer for Apple. And then we got the Coros. Pace 2, my right wrist, and then we got the Garmin 955 Forerunner Solar, also on my right wrist, right above the pace, and then, you know, it doesn't end there. We have a Garmin uh, HR Pro, heart rate monitor pro, that was on my chest, so let's put that on. And on top of that, <laughs> we had my bib, which had the tracker, the chip for the race. Official time for the Apple Series 7, 2 hour, 55 minutes and 21 seconds because it died at 25 and a half miles. Apple Ultra, 3 hours, 1 minute, 37 seconds. Course Pace 2, 3 hours, 1 minute and 38 seconds. Garmin 955 4 Runner, 3 hours, 1 minute and 38 seconds. Official time for my chip, my bib from the marathon, 3 hours, 1 minute and 34 seconds. Let's break down the Apple Series 7. It took me 2 hours, 55 minutes and 21 seconds to run 25.5 miles because the Apple Watch died. The battery couldn't last long. But I will say though, I was communicating, calling and texting via my watch before the race because I didn't have my phone on me. So I'll give you a little bit of benefit of the doubt, Apple Series 7. With that distance, the average pace was 6 minutes and 53 seconds. The heart rate average was 167 beat per minute and the max was 180. These heart rate are going to be very similar to three of the watches because I had three of the watches connected to my chest piece and one of them wasn't connected so we'll get to that. Elevation gain was 852 feet. The active calories was 2743. The total calorie was 3000 and 18. Average cadence was 171. Average running power was 245 watt. Now let's talk about the Apple Ultra right here. It took me three hours, one minute and 37 seconds to cover 26.41 miles. So I added distance. It took an average of six minutes, 53 seconds per mile. And I was expecting the miles to be similar with both Apple watches because they're on the same hand, so same movements. So not shocked there, but Apple Series 7 didn't hit 26 miles at all. My average heart rate was exactly the same because it's connected to the same chest piece, 167, and max was 180. Elevation gain, I don't know what kind of thing this Apple Ultra was on. Are you guys ready for this? It says elevation gain was 2,784 feet. Apple are you watching this? I'm up to date. What? <laughs> I don't even know. There's no way I would have survived that at that pace. But that's what the Apple says. Active calorie was a little more than a Series 7. 2,822. Total calorie was 3,087. Not too far off. Cadence was very similar. 171 SPM. Running power was kind of similar to 288 watts. Now let's go to the Coros Pace 2. It took me 3 hours, 1 minute and 38 seconds to run 26.38 according to the watch. The average pace was 6 minutes and 54 seconds. Once I push it to Strava, you know Strava always shaves something off. It says the average pace was 6 minutes and 53 seconds. But on the watch app, 6 minutes and 54 seconds. Average heart rate, similar because also the Coros Pace 2 was connected to the heart rate monitor. 167 average and highest was 180. Elevation gain 833. That's more like it. 2000 calories. It says 3,005 calories. Cadence, average cadence was similar to the Apple's, 171. But I didn't see the max cadence on the Apple. This max cadence is 193 that I hit. The running power average was 297 and the max 394. Yeah, I'm powerful, guys. <laughs> 
This show a little more detail. Um, it shows my aerobic was 5.3, which is the most I've seen throughout the marathon training block. And my anaerobic improvement was 3.9. And it says my aerobic was overreaching. And anaerobic, it says improving. Garmin 955 Forerunner or Forerunner 955. It took me three hours, one minute and 38 seconds. I covered 26 point three seven miles average pace was six minute and 53 seconds similar to the apple ultra and similar to the c7 which really doesn't count because you did not cover 26 miles because you died heart rate so this is the only watch that i did not have connected to the heart rate monitor so we're gonna see how close the wrist is and it was a little more higher compared to the chest piece which is the closest i think you can get your heart rate while running so average heart rate wasn't that far off y'all you ready 168 i'm proud I'm impressed. And the max was 181. So that's very, very close without being connected to the chest piece. Good job. Elevation gain. I think that was similar to the chorus too. 833 feet. Makes more sense. Not 2,000, almost 3,000 feet gain. This one shows active calories. That's 2,592. And total calorie burn was 2,850. It shows also sweat loss, which is 3,028 milliliter i don't know if the other watches do but i just didn't see it in the app or maybe i didn't go deep into it so let me know in the comments below average cadence very close to everything is actually exactly the same 171 spm and max cadence was 191 spm running power average was insane 406 watts and the max was 564 i don't know what that is is that Eli kipchoge pace or something i don't know what that is that is the biggest i've ever seen in any of my data with wearing four watches for like how many years now this watch said i hit overreaching with aerobic 5.0 but anaerobic zero what i was running that fast i didn't gain any anaerobic power any improvement in there very interesting to say the least this is interesting because it says actually total time was three hours one minute 44 seconds moving time is three hours one minute and 38 seconds that's similar to the pace two elapsed time you guys know if you stop the watch i didn't do any of that like if you're wasting time that's it's a background recording that's also the three hour one minute 44 so i didn't never pause the watch i never walked the, I, I maybe right before i went through the gate i hit start but that can be more than a second or two so the total moving time of the run is three hours one minute and 30 38 seconds similar to the car space 2 but the car space 2 just said this is the time there wasn't differentiating moving time total time or any of that before we get to the actual chip time there's some random extra things on the apple watch which apple is really trying to step up in the running game so it has the ground contact time which was uh 217 ms is that millisecond i don't even it has to be it also has the stride length the other ones do too stride length is 1.2 m vertical isolation is 10.1 centimeter cm so that's really cool that apple has the these other factors that's in their watch app now let's get to the chip so according to the people who provided this chip to Boston Marathon it took me three hours one minute and 34 seconds to cover 26.2 miles the average pace was six minute and 56 seconds per mile that is pretty much what I see the app doesn't give you as many information as it would like so you're not gonna get all these little details that I'm talking about my ranking overall out of everyone that completed the marathon was 4,527. I think there was 33,000 runners, but I think so many people didn't finish. So whatever that total is. Gender, 4,206. Division, I'm guessing my age group, um, 2,831. I'm going to leave it on the screen. All the miles with the splits next to it so y'all can see what each splits was. You guys are going to see all the pace together overall with each watch so this is the breakdown you may ask me which is the best watch we have also have to consider the factor of when you're running a marathon when they measure the distance it's probably on that blue line that they have the elites beyond so i was behind people shifting out to the side dodging water puddles because it was slippery so and when you're bending sometimes you're not bending tight tightest to the corners that's bending there's not a lot of sharp turns in boston but there's some slight especially when you get to the noon hill making those turns so those wide turns could add a little bit of distance during the race so the Apple Watch is definitely going to pick up those. The Coros, the Garmin, they're going to pick those up. So that's why they're a little over 26.2. The best part about this is now, y'all see, they're not really too far from each other, right? And the ones that are on the same arm are similar. So that's a big thing too as well. According to the chip time, the final time was enough. It was seconds off. So we're talking about one hour, three hours, one minute and 34 seconds versus three hours, one minute and 38 seconds. They were not far off from the chip time actually. And the difference is those little 
little detail I just explained to you guys, those little factors. And in terms of heart rate, very similar because the chest piece and the other one that wasn't connected, a little different. It would be cool if this had a heart rate monitor on it. That'd be cool to look at that data. So I think that you make the decision which watch you can take on a marathon based on what I've shared you with you guys with data that's the closest to the chip time because I feel like chip time is very, that's the real deal, right? Would I recommend one? If I do have to pick one right now in this moment, it's definitely going to be the Coro's Pace 2. The reason is I think that was the closest in terms of everything. It was the closest to the actual chip time. Garmin and Apple Ultra are coming in second close because they're same pace pretty much. Apple Series 7, I love Apple, but nah. That's not gonna do it. The battery, I know this is older, not a C7, whatever, but it should be able to, to complete 26.2 miles. Let me know if y'all want me to test out any other watches. This is what I do, I am the watchman. Have you seen anyone wear four watches in hella good? Come on, this is what I do, this is my job. And I don't do it only for one run or two run. I've been doing this for almost closing out on two years because numbers don't lie. And also, if you do it with a lot of run, you really get the actual number. So I also wanna share with y'all a 100 mile race that I did with Leadville in the near future because I haven't done one, which watch died, which made it to the end. You guys guess in the comments below which made it to the end in terms of battery life. And we have another 100 mile race coming up, which is at Western States. You betcha I'm gonna be wearing four watches. I don't know if I'm gonna swap out one of the Corals with the Apex Pro, because I do love the Apex, but I have the Pro 2 now I need to put to test. But stay tuned for all of that. This is the data for Boston Marathon. So these watches are doing a really good job, the watch company. The winner right now that was closest to the chip for y'all to see is the Corals Pace 2. That's it, y'all. I'll see you on the next video. Do what you gotta do to be that much better than you were yesterday. That's what it's all about. Put one foot in front of the other. Let's get it. Let's go!